Good day and welcome to today's webinar, Thriving in the New Hybrid Cloud Environment. Today's speakers include Bill Martorelli, Principal Analyst with Forrester Research, Michael Piccinini, Senior Manager with Dell Technologies, and James Valdez, Director, Private Cloud Product Management with SunGuard Availability Services. A few notes before we begin. To learn a bit more about each of our speakers, please click on the Speaker Bio tab at the bottom of the event console. You'll also find a Q&A chat at the bottom of the console as well. Please enter any questions you have for discussion during our Q&A portion of today's event. Today's session is being recorded and will be available to all participating at the close of the call. Now let's get started. I'd like to welcome Bill Martorelli with Forrester Research. Bill? All right, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Good to be with you all. And thanks for joining us for our webinar today. I'd like to set the stage with some introductory comments, if you will, about what it means to build the hybrid cloud environment. How do we thrive in the cloud, the hybrid cloud environment that we find ourselves in? And I'd like to argue the point that, you know, a lot of, there's been a lot of talk about this. Alternatively, uh, the hybrid cloud environment, the multi-cloud environment. Uh, the question sometimes comes up as to what's the difference. I'll, I'll explore that in a, in a couple of slides. But I think even more to the point, you know, we find ourselves at a crossroads, if you will, where we kind of wound up in, in, in a place where we, we say we believe that we're in the hybrid multi-cloud environment. We say we are, even though we differ in what we mean when we say it. But, but even more to the point, we, we kind of find ourselves here, not necessarily with a blueprint or plan. And, and I think in order to really thrive in the, in the hybrid cloud environment, we need to make that turn right into being more deterministic, being more consciously choosing uh, the hybrid environment we, we build. And indeed, making these choices is really uh, the key, I think, and, and there'll be many choices to be made, to be sure, but, but making these choices effectively will be key to thriving in the new hybrid cloud environment. So, one, but, uh, if I may just move forward, you know, just a kind of reminder as to why does it matter? Well, you know, here we find ourselves in a world, particularly in a, in a very challenging time uh, due to pandemic and other pressures in which we're being forced to do more than ever before with sometimes limited and, and constrained resources. And, and the point is, is that by using cloud, in particular hybrid cloud environments, we can affect new business related ecosystems that place the customer at the center, not incidental or not as an afterthought, but as the center of the action. And that's really at the end of the day, what it's all about. Let's turn back to the hybrid cloud. And what do we mean when we say it? Well, you know, clearly our data suggests that 80% of our survey respondents, which are people like you, right, uh, identify their, their cloud strategies as hybrid, but even going further, right, they describe themselves as not just raw beginners, but actually people that have moved forward fairly substantially in their hybrid cloud journey. As you can see on the left, of course, there's my 80% figure I just cited. But on the right, how far along are you in implementing hybrid cloud? We see a full 23% of respondents have said they have expanded and upgraded an existing implementation. 37% have uh, said or, or argued that they have implemented and are updating, or I'm sorry, implementing or implemented, have implemented whereas 33%, roughly one-third, plan to implement during the next 12 months. But again, we come to the question is what have they really done, right? What do they really think a hybrid cloud environment means? And you can see on this slide, when we asked respondents that very question, you can see the pattern of, 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 of answers vary. And this really comes to the point where we come to the uh, discussion of what is hybrid and, and what does multi mean? Do they mean the same thing or not? Well, you know, you can see that in these respondents that, let's say over a period of three years that the, this data uh, 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 covers, uh, a lot of people believe that using multiple public and private clouds together for different application workloads 
is you know basically the major definition of, of hybrid and i think i would largely agree hybrid to me at least means different types of clouds working or, or, or together or at least theoretically working together whereas you see at the bottom companies that say using multiple public clouds simultaneously obviously a much smaller percentage but this is what we typically mean when we say multi-cloud right you multiple clouds of the same type and then i guess in the begin in the middle there you see integrating public cloud with non-cloud on-premise infrastructure and data again very much a hybrid type of vision now the purpose here is not to draw out semantic boundaries but just to just to clarify the idea that you know we talk about hybrid we talk about multiple or multi-cloud somewhat simultaneously uh, in many uh, ways these definitions are blurred and and somewhat misleading. It's both, clearly, as we move forward. We are moving into a hybrid multi-cloud environment, either accident or by design, and increasingly this is the way we have to consider it. But I guess, you, you know, why why is it even happening? I mentioned before about the business rationale in aggregate, right, in terms of building new business ecosystems that serve the customer and achieve digital transformation. And we know that cloud and in its many manifestations is is how we do this, right? Both as an infrastructure model and as a software development architectural model. But why? Looking at it in a little more detail, uh, we believe that companies are being led or being pressured to hybridize, if you will, due to the confluence of three uh, factors, right? And, and, and these are the three, right? On the one hand, clients clearly want to build new uh, applications, Logically, new applications are good candidates to build on modern platforms, and increasingly this means cloud-native platforms, uh, whether that's containers or serverless, and whether that is in the form of, let's say, truly cloud-native specific features and functions that are native to a particular cloud platform or more generic constructs like containers and, and, and functions, which, of course, exist across different types of cloud platforms. And again, in, in many cases here, the choice is, you know, which cloud ecosystem platform or plural uh, is right for us, right? Whereas at the same time, also companies want to add cloud services to existing applications. Uh, let's say not only move applications to the cloud, but also, you know, what sequence, right? Modernize first, then migrate or the reverse, right? And, and what model to choose? Uh, simple lift and shift or lift and extend, by which we mean uh, the ability to add some value, whether to containerize or at least set the stage for further adaptation to the cloud-native environment. And in this case, the question becomes, you know, which cloud services and integration tools do we need to affect that journey? And then finally, you know, companies also want to optimize the IT that they own and run by, let's say, driving greater efficiency, improve utilization of existing IT assets, you know, build a better private cloud or hosted private cloud. And in this case, the question is often, how do we create consistency across on-premises and off-premises from the standpoint of, of policies, of regulatory compliance, right, and other important issues that allow us to more effectively mod, ma manage in this, this hybrid cloud world. But for the moment, you know, the, the, the hybrid cloud model is not entirely well defined and in fact is being defined as we speak right uh, we've heard for example uh, a lot of recent activity on the part of hyperscale providers major software companies to provide let's say hybridized solutions that help us bridge the on-premise and cloud worlds right but it's not just on-premise and public but of course SaaS hosted private cloud and of course traditional infrastructure as well as let's say internal private clouds that are part of this picture. And in managing this uh, estate or landscape, increasingly we are facing uh, a set of, of, of interesting challenges. I've listed just a few of them here, right? In terms of mastering, let's say self-service provisioning for end users, right? Using mechanisms like catalogs, uh, affecting, uh, let's say integration, uh, and, and managing and, and, and effectively using ITSM tooling in a cloud environment, as well as the, the 
sometimes necessary uh, reckoning with regard to funding models and chargeback models that that self-service provisioning inevitably entails. Also, you know, configuration using infrastructure as code principles, what configuration management tools and, and technologies are relevant to making progress and, and affecting this journey, what tools and APIs should be exposed directly to developers, what is the role of end users and others. Also, another huge challenge is, is hybrid data, the implications of data gravity uh, on latency sensitive applications is one manifestation of this, but of course, regular, uh, more traditional challenges like backup, disaster recovery, migration, ownership, storage, and performance issues also loom very, very large in the hybrid environment. And what about migration, right? Is this a one-time event or an ongoing concern? How do we you know, approach portability across different elements of the, the hybrid cloud environment? And how do we manage, right? What kind of tooling do we need in terms of cloud uh, management and and do we use let's say third-party tools or use cloud data facilities again choices we need to be making if we hope to thrive in the hybrid cloud environment but then finally on this slide performance monitoring and management how do we really achieve this using advanced uh, ops tools AI ops whatever and, and fit that to the the hybrid cloud environment you know to this I would add I mentioned the regulatory requirement before from, uh, is, is one that companies are very, very concerned about. And of course, costs. Uh, we've seen cost as a major, major uh, preoccupation with cloud customers uh, in terms of you know, how do we really manage and track costs uh, in our cloud environment generally, but specifically in a hybrid multi-cloud world, this is uh, uh, significantly more challenging. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's not neither hybrid nor multi-cloud, but both. As you can see, there's different data points that suggest here that most large enterprises in particular are all, you know, you could say that they are hybrid, right? They say they are, but they also say they're multi-cloud, right? Uh, and, and I'm not trying to suggest that the challenges are necessarily the same because uh, on the one hand, you know, the, the multi-cloud environment brings up specific concerns of its own, right? In the sense of, you know, how do I use different multi-clouds or different public clouds effectively, how do I avoid, let's say, vendor lock-in? Uh, when do I choose which? Should I hunker down and, and double down on a single cloud for the purpose of, of, of greater financial leverage and flexibility and greater discounts uh, and use, let's say, other clouds just for peripheral, peripheral issues? Or should I maintain a more deterministic multi-cloud strategy from a procurement standpoint? You know, we see a lot of variation in the clients that we uh, that we see, and and I think the answer varies, to be sure, uh, across industry and across individual type of company. But again, you know, your 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 own route and your own choices will dictate your journey. And and you know, we know that there is a significant challenge in making a cohesive unit out of the disparate parts of a hybrid cloud scenario, be that public cloud, be that private cloud, be that hosted private cloud, of course, traditional, even uh, virtualized legacy infrastructure. And success, you know, will mean a, a combination of, of these and combined with additional sources of innovation like open source and some use of some of these emerging solutions that I made reference to earlier, right, which are still in their relatively early days of maturation, but nevertheless, uh, promising great things uh, in in allowing companies to bridge more effectively the elements of of the hybrid cloud environment. Now, I just want to say a couple words about multi-cloud. Uh, we've had done surveys, of course, about uh, the multi-cloud part. We find that customers are drawn to being, let's say, the multi-cloud for the purpose of achieving overall better performance for access to different types of services, for the different needs of different workloads, and for greater overall resiliency. We know in doing so, at least so they tell us in our surveys, that they're challenged by concerns about security, regulatory compliance. They worry about the impact on network topologies, and of course, the difficulty of tracking costs across multiple cloud environments that I alluded to earlier. But on the plus side, they do report 
that they are achieving better overall performance, better overall IT cost management, and improved security and compliance by moving down the multi-cloud path, even though, as I said before, one could argue that we're really making that turn right now as an industry from sort of accumulation of cloud environments toward a more deterministic, more consciously planned, and more, uh, you know, let's say, a, a more intelligent choices being made as we move into the future, and hopefully with the idea that we will truly thrive as opposed to survive in, in the hybrid cloud world. So, you know, what does it mean? I mean, we, just kind of a word about the hosted private cloud, which you know, we, we have done some research on and, and kind of occupies a sort of middle ground between, let's say, in-house, on-premise infrastructure that is dedicated in nature, but also uh, uh, exhibiting some of the benefits of the public cloud in terms of scalability. Again, to be clear, we're using this to describe a, a an externally hosted private cloud service that is physically dedicated and uh, separated, a single customer, but we find that it is attractive uh, for a variety of workloads, including better hosting, right? Uh, a better form of managed hosting, a, a, a very, very effective means for delivering disaster recovery, uh, an effective model by which companies can achieve some of the benefits and values of the public cloud in a private dedicated setting, uh, certainly an alternative to an internal private cloud, which can be very difficult to uh, affect both politically and technologically. And finally, an ability to extend public cloud usage into a dedicated setting and, and work more effectively in a private cloud environment or a hybrid cloud environment. And indeed, we find the, the dynamics very similar uh, on both the North American uh, market as well as the uh, European market, even though the data is represented somewhat differently. Uh, one point I, I did want to make is is uh, that, you know, again, it's not just public cloud, despite what you may have heard. Uh, here is an excerpt from our infrastructure survey in which we we ask people what are their plans to adopt uh, particular cloud models. And you can see internal private, hosted private, and public, three of the major elements of this so-called uh, hybrid cloud environment that we've been talking about so far. Uh, as you can see, there's a, certainly a great deal of interest in the public cloud as denoted by the, the darker color to the left in which we denote uh, companies that are expanding and upgrading existing implementations, whereas the, the lighter color denotes uh, companies that are perhaps more on the early phase, right, implementing or having recently implemented. But as you can see, the numbers are substantial across the different models. There's still a great deal of interest in internal private cloud still a significant level of interest in hosted private cloud as there is that we would expect to see in the in the public cloud environment. And just in closing, just referring again, simply graphically uh, referring to these solutions that I have been referring to, you know, watch this space. The hybrid cloud solutions that are emerging from the major hyperscalers, again, the major software houses uh, are promising to ease our hybrid cloud journeys uh, and, and allow us to move applications into the cloud virtually unchanged, but uh, in which case the choice that, that looms for us as implementers and consumers of the technology is how, how far do we want to go with this? Do we want to simply move applications into these hybrid cloud solutions or do we want to move beyond them by taking advantage of the, the, the more advanced features of the, the specific cloud environment where we're moving into. Again, this is a fundamental choice I think that customers will be facing in the years ahead, balancing their need to move to the cloud rapidly in the face of significant business change, but at the same time leveraging the, the, the power of the software development uh, architecture that the cloud offers for introducing innovation rapidly, and, and each, each, each company's journey here is likely to vary. So in closing, before I turn it over to our fellow speakers, I'd just like to point out a couple of the elements and, and reality of the challenge that, that are facing companies as they seek to, again, thrive, not just survive in the hybrid cloud environment. By all means, we would recommend that companies you know, take stock of these emerging cloud technologies 
and and build them both uh, cloud technologies as we know them today as well as these emerging hybrid cloud infrastructure options determine their suitability in your enterprise i will say that in the work i've done we're finding that companies are planning on these that that current implementation remains modest but uh, plans are big awareness is high and we'll see a tremendous amount of activity in these in these areas in the years and months to come we also think that you know that the, the key to really unlocking the power of the cloud from the standpoint of migration and or modernization is through the mechanism of an application's portfolio assessment to identify priorities and and identify, establish timelines. Uh, again, this need not be a, a, a death march. I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be a multi-year process. Uh, it can be done relatively quickly. And keep in mind that it's really, at the end of the day, a means for consensus building, right? More so than exacting, uh, deriving exact measurements. Yes, there are a variety of tools that can help us here as well by identifying those applications with significant business values, significant technical debt, and other characteristics that may either encourage or discourage migration to the cloud. Certainly, you know, establish a plan for skills, recruitment, and retention that you will need to thrive in the hybrid multi-cloud era. Again, we've all talked about how Skill sets are broadening, right? People talk about U-shaped or other types of alphabetic T-shaped people, people that retain great technical depth, but also achieve breadth. They can see more and see beyond the, the confines of an individual tech uh, competency that they've honed over the years. Finding these two people are tough. Retaining them may be even tougher. Uh, and so be realistic in your ability to do so. And if you can't, uh, maybe you know as a, an alternative or maybe a complementary strategy uh, we are finding that companies increasingly are turning to service firm partnerships for this relevant assistance that they need to not only embark on their hybrid cloud journey but to uh, to 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 make substantial progress in migration modernization and even operation uh, as they seek to thrive in the, uh, the hybrid cloud environment so with that I'd like to turn it over to Mike Hey, Bill. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Great content. Um, hi, everyone, and and thanks for the time and thanks for joining. I, uh, I was going to take a, a quick moment and um, just give a quick call out to um, why we're here and uh, who I am. So, a uh, real quick introduction. My name is Michael Piccinini, and I'm with Dell Technologies and responsible for our Global Alliance's cloud service provider business uh, in the Americas, right? And um, basically wanted to highlight this slide here and, and talk to it for a moment. Uh, in a nutshell, if you're not familiar with Dell Technologies or, or um, have you know, been aware of us in, in, the, in the near term um, part of our overall evolution, uh, Dell Technologies we were founded by Michael Dell in his dorm room in 1984. Uh, and today, uh, we find ourselves a, a global company, uh, a $90 billion plus size organization with over 150,000 uh, team members. Uh, aside from being a leader in the major markets which we compete in, uh, I'm you know, also always happy to highlight and, and say uh, we continue to be recognized uh, beyond the products we make, but also as a top company when it comes to uh, being one of the best places to work, um, uh, the, one of the highest ranked within uh, how we run our business from an ethical standpoint, a uh, leader in innovation as well as uh, with diversity. Um, our core mission as a business is to create technologies that drive human progress. And some of the major you know, areas of focus uh, are really around not just the personal computing, which I think most people sometimes think of Dell as, uh, but also within the data center uh, infrastructure space, such as storage and servers, backup, uh, networking, right, as well as uh, a whole slew of complementary solutions that are components of our VMware um, business and so software portfolio. Um, that, you know, that portfolio really helps enable uh, enterprises uh, with their, you know, not just enterprise applications and modernizing them, but also uh, next generation modern applications that are maybe cloud native. Uh, and doing this from a private, but also to complex multi and hybrid cloud uh, type environments that Bill was talking about a few minutes ago. Um, so, you know, a quick snapshot that's a little bit, you know, about us, right? And, and I thought that was a nice precursor to a, a pretty important <laughs> component of today's chat, which is really about 
uh, getting to that end state, right? I, I think a little bit about us is important from Adele Technologies. We make what we believe are some of the best products in the world uh, related to data center and infrastructure. But um, at the end of the day, what, what we're obviously seeing and what I think a lot of you folks are going through is this evolution and the transformation of the uh, ways to deliver technology to our end users, right? Our, our internal customers and our external customers. And what we're finding more and more is that customers are really looking for a trusted business partner uh, to help go beyond just products, right? Beyond servers and storage, uh, beyond trying to integrate them within their own data centers, um, or even trying to connect all these you know, complex options out there that are available, a lot of cloud confusion, if you will, right? So what we're trying to do is help our customers in their transformation, and what we believe is really one of the best ways of getting there is by working alongside our trusted business partners um, like a SunGuard, right? And, and the best of breed solutions that they've put together um, with a great partnership we have together uh, with Dell Technologies, right? So the, the core piece of uh, my portion here was really highlighting and thanking SunGuard for their partnership, um, but also, you know, bringing that best of breed Dell Technologies infrastructure and software stack uh, to the end user community as a service, right? Where you're going to get the best of breed solution, the best SLA, something that's safe and compliant, uh, always on, uh, and simple to consume while also being cost effective. And um, James, that's where I'll hand the microphone to you and thank you for the invitation to participate in this today. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Um, and also thanks to uh, Bill. Uh, good to be with you guys here on this webinar. Uh, folks, my name is James Valdez, and I am a director of our private cloud platform services uh, at SunGuard Availability Services. And uh, I'd like to thank you for joining us. And I just have a couple of slides I want to go through here, and then we'll, we'll open the mic up for questions and conversation. So as Bill mentioned early on in his uh, in his slide slideware, um, hybrid cloud is about ecosystems. Um, hybrid cloud is about uh, being able to um, engage multiple um, environments seamlessly, um, and also you know in in the endeavors of pursuing the best application in, in the best place. So. Uh, as I think folks uh, in the last several years have come to realize, you know, not every application is well suited to the same cloud environment. Um, so being able to bridge um, the required environments in support of your business objectives, you know, is one of the central themes around the hybrid, um, the hybrid environment. Now, as Bill said, you know, if you ask five different people what their definition of hybrid cloud is, you're going to get five and maybe even six different answers. You know, there's a lot that goes into that, um, into understanding how hybrid cloud can be brought to bear for, for you. Um, but at its basis, um, the hybrid cloud um, enables, it's an enabler. It's an, it enables access to new markets through an ecosystem of, con of connectivity, through uh, software defined networking, through integration with um, other targets like, you know, GitHub. I'm sure most folks have heard, heard of that. Um, it's about agility to be able to leverage those, connecti those uh, connections and um, networked environments to bring to bear resources needed to respond to your competitive threats. Um, it's about maximizing talent. It's about finding a solution in a hybrid environment that provides the right level of management and assistance if you need it, as you need it, when you need it. Uh, these are all critical to um, having expectations of, of a hybrid cloud solution. Now so at SunGuard, um, we have undertaken the effort uh, to put our private cloud solutions at the center, if you will, of our uh, connected hub infrastructure. Um, at SunGuard, we have a 40 plus year legacy 
uh, extending back into the 70s, um, recovering mainframes for banks, uh, and, and so forth. I mean, we've been around for quite a while. And what we're doing is we're, we're basically bringing our um, heritage into the, into the present and the future. Our connected cloud environment is the latest uh, addition to our, um, our portfolio of services, including connected recovery, workplaces, and infrastructure. Um, we can even recover mainframes. I mean, who does that anymore, right? Uh, so at SunGuard, we put our customer on our, in our private cloud solution at the center of that hub. And from there, allow you to build out to wherever your destination requires, uh, where the ecosystems need to be developed, where the tools and resources need to come from. Um, these are all enabled through our uh, essentially state-of-the-art private cloud solution through software-defined networking, software-defined storage, um, and fully integrated solutions like backup and managed services and recovery. Our cloud service portfolio consists of two basic elements at this point. We have a fully managed public solution or a self-managed public solution as your needs require. And we've you know, brought to market through our partnership with uh, our friends at uh, Dell and VMware, our private cloud solution. Uh, Mike and I have been working together for quite some time now, working to, to uh, build this, this uh, private cloud solution basically from the ground up. And in so doing, we took a, a, a long, hard look at what was going on in the market and what the user experience was from uh, folks like you. And also listening to what our customers were telling us who were using others of our products and services. So first and foremost, we wanted to bring to, to market a private cloud solution that uh, provides flexibility. It's, it's about the flexibility to do uh, what you need to do on your platform without having your service provider get on the way or get in the way rather. Uh, and in doing that, you know, one of the things that we are, we're very aware of is that folks are very conscious of um, being susceptible to vendor lock-in as, as Bill mentioned, you know, this is a VMware based private cloud platform with flexible spend options, flexible commitment options. Uh, on this platform, you can come as little, come and use as little or as much as you like, commit to as little or as much as you would like to spend, um, and um, you know, enable um, your business to be as flexible as possible without being constrained by business requirements from your service provider. Um, it's all based on um, HA architecture, but more than that, it's also um, got a fully integrated recovery solution. So not only is your is your environment resilient, but it's also uh, extremely recoverable and highly available um, through bespoke recovery, through fully integrated backup, um, keeping your data out of harm's way. Um, in keeping with the flexibility that our customers require, um, our self-management portal is extremely comprehensive from end to end. It enables uh, the full depth and breadth of, of uh, virtual environment management from storage to network to compute. Um, but at the same time, we can help you if you need it and when you need it uh, with fully flexible uh, managed services. There's no long-term commitment to any managed services tier. There's no uh, obligation to maintain for months or even years, uh, you know, a, a locked in subscription. So uh, it's all about the flexibility of use for our customers. So having said all that, give us a, give us a look if um, any of these issues sound familiar to you. A private cloud is all about being at the center of an ecosystem. It's all about connecting to over 300 on net destinations through software defined networking. It's all about help when you need it, as you need it. And it's all about keeping your business 
in business. It's all about recovering uh, your data when, if and when it's necessary. It's all about moving your data and your operation out of harm's way. So think about what we've heard today here from Bill and Mike and what the hybrid cloud solution means and how it can enable your, your journey, your competitiveness, your strategic pivots, um, and give us a call. Uh, contact us at the email you see there. Uh, we have uh, some environments that are ready uh, for, for you to come on over and try out and see how uh, solutions can be brought to bear to work for you. Uh, and with that, I'll hand it back to Kathleen, our hostess, and we'll go from there. Great, right. thanks guys. Uh, thanks so much for, for all that information. Uh, we do have a couple of questions that have been submitted, so I'm gonna get ahead, go ahead and get started with those. Uh, our first question is, how should companies weight the merits of going fully cloud native versus taking the hybridized route with a primary with a primarily lift and shift strategy. Do you want me to start with that? And then we'll see if- Yeah, I'm gonna give you that one to Bill. Yep. All right, all right. Yeah. Well, you know, it's an interesting question. I, I, I feel like it's, it's, you know, I think about this and I, I argue the point that people are being asked to do two things simultaneously, right? They, they were under great pressure to, to migrate to the cloud and, and you know, maybe for, the desire to close a data center or, or to, you know, reduce costs associated with infrastructure, maybe hardware, software licenses and, and whatnot. Yet at the same time, you know, people are being urged to say, well, Hey, you know, we want to move along on the, the, the cloud, uh, uh, flexibility, right? We want to achieve that, that, that power of the cloud we've been promised. And it's difficult to see, you know, how companies can really achieve them these two these two mandates simultaneously in some cases, and they really need to pick and choose. I think there's certainly a lot of merit in the idea that I can move something quickly to the cloud, and and by using some of these hybrid tools that I think uh, James you were talking about, and I, I mentioned earlier. But on the one on the other hand, do I want to stay there for forever? Right? Do I do I want to move to the the native cloud features? You know, again, it's not necessarily either or, right? Uh, to, you know, between the two extremes, but everybody's going to have, I think, a sweet spot. Maybe by individual workload, right? Or maybe by you know their individual strategies to how they're going to fall on this continuum. But there is, there is a you know there is a choice to be made, a, a balancing act, I think, in in, in determining how far you want to go. And and uh, again, I think that's one of the major choices looming in the uh, in the years ahead. And and how that's going to, uh, let's say fit with other important elements such as control of the orchestration, containers orchestration layer, and other things that, that are being fought out on an industry-wide basis. So I don't know if you guys want to add anything to that, but. Yeah, I think that, you know, the cloud native is certainly um, foremost in the minds of a lot of folks, but there are, um, there's a lot to that. Um, both good and bad. And so when I say that, you know, there are a lot of applications out there that um, are still not cloud native and still not very cloud friendly. And lifting and shifting those into uh, cloud nat nat nativity <laughs> um, is not always, um, you know, obvious. And when you're looking at a hybrid solution, like you said, Bill, sometimes you have to pick and choose and um, having a solution that enables um, like the legacy type of support, perhaps from a private cloud environment on uh, running VMware uh, integrated seamlessly with a cloud native solution on you know, AWS or Google or Azure, that becomes the best highest purpose, if you know what I mean. No, no, I, I agree with you. I think that's great. All right, well, any, any, anybody else? Otherwise, we can move on. Yeah, we'll move on to the next question. Uh, what are the top three to five critical elements of hybrid solutions that I need to look for? Uh, Is that for Bill? Is that one? Oh, that's <laughs> for me? 
Okay, you know, well, I, can I mean, <laughs> I, uh, I can do it. Now, why don't you start with it, and then I'll follow up. So you're right. In a, in a hybrid cloud solution, you know, first and foremost, um, what is the flexibility that it enables you from a you know, from a, a business perspective? For example, you know, what are the business terms? Are they flexible enough? Do they enable you to accommodate uh, swings in your business, peakiness, cycles? Um, you know, does the solution bring a comprehensive set of capabilities from a self-management perspective, if that's central to your, to your endeavor? Um, you know, a lot of folks do not like, because of the way business operates these days and um, the agility required to, to address competitiveness, um, being able to act immediately on your environment sometimes is, is key. And, uh, you know, does your, does your provider, does your solution enable that? Um, and then, you know, lastly is um, what can you do with it? How can, what does the cloud solution offer you that you can build now and in the future in terms of solutions that enable you to um, free up either internal overhead and um, you know, direct your resources at competitiveness, or you know, what does it do in terms of uh, enabling you to, um, to to undertake a pivot? Perhaps you want to um, refocus your business or take a, a different strategic um, turn. So, you know, in my mind, um, those are some key elements to keep in mind when looking at what a cloud solution and a hybrid cloud solution can do. Bill, did you want to? Yeah, no, I, I would add, I really like what you said, and, and I, I'm kind of limited in what I can say, but I, I would say that it, it's interesting to note that, that these different types of hybrid solutions from the major hyperscalers and others are really different, right, in what they set out to do and how they do it. One of them, I think, a very well-known example is effectively an appliance you, you, for, you, you install in your your own data center, right? Whereas another is basically a, a containers-based orchestration solution that promises a significant amount of interoperability and workload portability across hyperscale or cloud platforms. And I think evaluating them on this basis is important. What are they really seeking to do? How do they do it? What is their potential for really helping you out in a hybrid end or? I guess one thing is true most of them do have obvious application in the hybrid cloud world, maybe not necessarily the same amount in the multi-cloud world, right? If you look at that, I'd argue that it's the same, but yeah, you know, the, if, it's, if it helps you achieve portability across different public clouds, you know, that, that's something that not all of them really have uh, to the same degree. And then I think another thing is the economic model. We've had some evidence, at least anecdotal in nature, that, that you know, some people are finding that these things are, uh, you know, they, they, they may be economic, they may not. It, it depends on certain circumstances. Certainly, it would be a good idea to take a look at that. Great. Okay, we have another question. Can processing take place in the cloud? If so, how are software co costs calculated? So, I, I can take a swing at that. Um, yeah, James. So, yeah, so if I understand the question correctly, um, and feel free to, to, to um, I don't know, do we have uh, audio support for the audience, Kathleen? We do not, we do okay, not. Sorry. So Jeff, if I don't hit your question correctly, please uh, type in uh, some uh, clarifying comments if, you, if you'd like. Um, but uh, if this is an, if, if this is a, a design where you want to offload processing of data from say an application tier, um, yeah, that is absolutely something that can be done in the cloud uh, in a very straightforward fashion. Um, that's a very common use case, uh, especially as um, data loads can vary, you know, depending on the nature of the application, the nature of your business. Um, from a software perspective, you know, there's generally, um, uh, you know, depending on how you're processing this data, you know, the actual um, uh, software application itself that is licensed. A lot of times they're licensed on the number of cores um, that 
uh, are involved in supporting the uh, processing activity, sometimes the amount of RAM as well. Um, but when it comes down to other costs, you know, there are other things to consider like the software costs of the platform that you're using, uh, the operating system costs of the platform that you're using. And if I can insert a, a shameless plug here, <laughs> we include all those costs as part of the base rate of uh, a private cloud solution from us. So in essence, um, to run processing in our private cloud solution, for example, you would just essentially be, um, need, you would need to cover the cost of the uh, application for the processing software itself, and then whatever the virtual resources are you needed uh, on the on the platform. And then of course, you know, a, a network connection. So I hope that answered your question. Yeah, if I can add a little, Great. may I add something? I Absolutely. found. Go ahead, Ben. I was just going to add a. I think that you know it's a good question because I think that the licensing, you know how the, the, it, it, the licensing cost for software that that is in, embedded in a, in a workload solution is important and uh, it can influence your choice of where it should reside in a hybrid cloud scenario. And I, I just an anecdotal example of a of a customer we spoke with that found that they 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 they're basically with our service provider and and without understanding everything about what they were telling us they made clear that they really found that a hosted private cloud model was the only way they could economically manage the licensing and that if they tried to use it in a public cloud scenario it just would it just would not work due to the licensing policies of the the, so, the software vendors involved so yeah again i think it's it's a very useful reminder that to, to, to keep in mind uh, uh take a very close uh, you know watch on on the implications as we start moving things around and trying to find the right you know place to put things in the hybrid uh, cloud scenario great bill thanks uh so i think we have time for one more question uh, what factors or elements should I take into consideration when pursuing a hybrid solution that leverages both public and private cloud platforms? Um, Bill, why don't you start with that one? Well, I mean, you certainly want to think about, uh, you know, like data transit and, and, and the implications thereof, if there's any, any, you know, problems with regard to latency, any kind of, uh, uh, Data gravity issues, network issues. Uh, I mentioned as, as something that our survey respondents uh, have have mentioned to us and described. Uh, and and I think that that uh, certainly you know skills. We we talked about that and and how that is. Uh, and and I and I think that you know also for those customers with a very high regulatory uh, and uh, burden. You know that that's certainly something to consider as well. How how the 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 security requirements, regulatory requirements, can be maintained across those uh, those elements, if you will. And I guess on the flip side, you know, how do I maintain, uh, let's say, you know, demand management across right? And how do I dispose of of or at least demonstrate my costs right and and track them? Which you know can be can be a challenge, right, across the disparate environments. So, I mean, those are just some 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 ideas that uh, that I that I have. What do you think, uh, Mike? Anything from your end? Or, or no, you, James? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, sorry, Mike. I think it, it totally um, makes sense and aligned with what I would have said. I think the you know it's kind of the recurring anthem we usually are saying is you know performance economics and trust right and everything can be broken down into those buckets really and then you kind of add on a um a factor like data gravity um and all the other <laughs> associations to moving that data around right but that's that's spot on okay very good Great. All right, and I think with that, uh, we'll uh, we'll close out today's session. We want to thank all of our speakers today for all the great information that you provided. I appreciate your time today. Um, as I said, the recorded a webinar will be forwarded to all the attendees at the end of the call today. We hope you've enjoyed this session. Um, please look out for additional sessions that will be coming your way uh, in early 2021. Uh, thank you for participating, and everyone have a great day.